Hi folks, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use the virtual de detent functionality of the um, verbal throttles. So let's load up the software, select our throttle and then click load. So this will load the configuration which is stored in the EE prom on the throttle into the software and then when we make the changes in the software we save them back to the device. The, this is the way most the configuration and the verbal stuff's done. The good thing about it is because it's the configuration is stored on the actual physical hardware on the joystick or throttle. If you unplug the throttle and move it to a different machine or joystick, you don't need to fiddle with the software. It's it's the, it's good to go like straight out of the box. So that's a handy thing. Right. So the um, detents are normally used on throttles to give you a feeling, some sort of feedback. Physic, these are the physical ones obviously I'm talking about, uh, of reaching a point. Now normally it would be for something like an afterburner for example where you push the throttle forward you'll get resistance and you'll have to either press a button or lift for example to move to say between 95 and 100 um, percent so that there's something there to give you some feedback when you're going to enter afterburner mode and start guzzling fuel like crazy. So the um, physical detents were removed from the verbal line of throttles way last year. The V1 and V2 have the physical detents. They have a low and a high value setting for each axis. So you basically got four in total because it's basically to do with the throttle handles. So they've put in some functionality in like the software and the firmware to enable you to have virtual detents. So first thing we need to do is pick a button now I've decided to use button three. Now button three on me on this particular configuration is on the left hand throttle. And that's it going active there. So it's the physical button I'm talking about. You can use whatever button you want. Pick one that's going to be handy for you and that you're going to remember. Let's go back to the access tab. Right. So this uh these two axes here. Um that is the left one. So one is left and two is the right one. So this is your configuration options here for basically how to set this up. So I'm going to set axis one here, axis two here. Uh, note that you have to do, you can't just set one of these, by the way, it won't work. You need to do them both. So select your axis and then your button. So for me, it's button three I've picked. So set on both of them. Mode is on. Uh, you can set these on different modes, by the way. You can set it to toggle off or whatever. I mean, it's up to you. It's, this is just the way I've worked out is the sort of the easiest way of doing it. And the next thing we need is we set our ranges. So then the physical throttles, this would be a question of like unscrewing a wee grub nut and moving stuff around. I'm going to go from 95, 95 to 5%. So what, 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 what do these settings mean in real terms? Well, what it means is that if I don't press button three, it will restrict the amount of um, percentage return from the, the uh, throttle to between 5% and 95%, even if it's outside those ranges. So I'll just save this off and show you. Oh, and before we go any further, uh, you can get LEDs to light whenever you do this. So I'm going to go throttle panel. I'm going to go red. Throttle panel, red. Okay, and then save this off. So what's going to happen is I'm going to move the joystick throttle through its range of movement and we'll observe what's actually being reported back here in the percentage value. So here we go, right now, the throttle handles are unlocked so we can move them independently and it's back at zero percent but it's actually clamping the values to five percent so if i press and hold button three two things happen the clamping comes off and the leds on the base panel light up red and conversely if i push it all the way forward so physically it's all the way forward the two handles 
but it's clamping the value at 95%. So if I press and hold the button, it goes to 100%. Now I can move it within that range now. Now me holding the button down, I actually move this axis through the entire range and take my finger off the button and it drops back to the clamp level. So that is the basic way to configure this. Now I'm gonna go and switch the LEDs off and show you the secondary way, which I think is probably the more useful way. Um, yeah, you switch on this hold value for both of them. And this is kind of neat. So what's gonna happen now is instead of me having to hold the button down to come outside of the clamp range to actually enable full movement, I just have to tap it. So yet again, 0% all the way to 100. And if I tap the button, just press it once, take my finger off it. Now it allows full range of movement. And this is where it's really neat. Now if I slowly drop the left throttle back, if I go below my threshold, so that would be 94, now the clamping is active again. So this is probably the better way of doing it because what it means is if I want to push it all, the, you know, push the throttle all the way forward, I just press the button once, take my finger off it, and now I'm at 100%, which means more than likely in like an F18, in DCS or an SE33, the afterburner will be going full tilt, and will be guzzling fuel, something shocking. So if I just pull the throttle back now, the handle's back, once it goes below that threshold now, even if I push it forward, it won't go back in the afterburner. So it's kind of neat. I think it's probably the more, the cooler way of doing it and making it a bit easier for you to handle. You just tap the button once and then after you've th throttled back through the 95%, it won't go to 100 until you tap the button again. So that's it. That's all you need to do. Get your virtual detents on your virtual throttle go. I hope this helps.